Okay, welcome humans, artists, collectors. As you can see, I'm in my studio here in uh, one of the two art studios I have. This one is in Herzele, not the one in Brussels. Before we go further, I have to be honest. I have to be honest with you guys. The reason why you only see my head in this video is because I recorded it without wearing any pants on. Let's go further. Anyway, we're gonna talk about pricing art, pricing acrylic paintings, for example, and hyperinflation because a lot of collectors, a lot of dealers have made millions on this art market pattern. And a lot of collectors have lost a lot of money as well. And and there are some artists who just literally ruined their whole career because they didn't knew and understand the possibilities of this pattern in the art market and hyperinflation. And so they couldn't recognize it when it was happening to themselves. And the dealers that they were working with, well, they apparently didn't really care and, and went for the short term money. Um, so so that, let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it in the following example. Let's say we have an artist called Justin Bober. Now, he's not a musician, he's an artist, a painter, an acrylic painter. And he clearly didn't watch this video years ago and didn't really ask himself the question how to price acrylic paintings. So, so that's one, one thing. Now, let's say we have a collector. Let's say his name is James. Just inventing names here. James. So James is a collector. And... James made a very, very good decision to buy paintings of a particular artist, paintings of Richard Prince, that's an actual artist that exists, for 100,000 euro. Now, this artist really became famous very quickly and he sold um, each of those paintings that he bought for 100,000 euro. He sold that for 7 million dollars each. Now, that's pretty, that's pretty, um, pretty impressive. And so what happens in the art world in a moment like that, when a collector makes um, such a powerful investment decision, what happens is that a lot of other collectors who don't have a lot of confidence yet, who are new to the art market, who are new to, to this whole investing realm and who don't trust their own decision-making process yet, and they shouldn't because they're new, you know, like, like that's normal. But those art, uh, those uh, collectors, they value the opinion of James because James made such a powerful decision and so they trust that opinion. And what's going to happen is that, for example, when James decides to buy paintings of Justin Bober, the artist that he just invented, uh, for, let's say, all the way in the beginning of his career, you know, like an emerging artist, he buys it for like 5K uh, each painting. Yeah. And he buys like, five paintings or something. What's going to happen in the art world is that people are going to start gossiping. They're going to say, did you hear James bought paintings of this artist, Justin Bober? Like that means something. It definitely means that this artist is going to do something really nice or whatever. And, um, and, and word goes round. And all these insecure collectors, what they're going to do is, hmm, perhaps this is a chance. James doesn't do that for no reason. Of course, James knows what he's doing and James wants to, um, wants to make a big profit there. Perhaps I should buy some paintings of Justin Bober. And so they start doing that. And lo and behold, scarcity starts to be created. The demand is high, the supply is very low and so prices go up. And before you know it, Justin Bober is... is is selling paintings at 10k, then 20k, 40k, 60, like 100k in no time. And, and, and so at various price points, collectors buy paintings of Justin Popper without really realizing why prices are going up and um, without really realizing um, that this whole thing is hyperinflation and it will drop in no time. And so at a sudden moment, James realizes it like, hey, hey, wait a minute. The only thing that changed in the career of Justin Bober is that I started buying paintings of Justin Bober. That's the only thing that changed. And so James realized because he's an expert and he realizes, hey, wait a minute. This whole thing is it's just a bubble. This whole thing is a bubble. 
I'm the one who is creating this here. Okay, wait a minute. In that case, I'm just going to sell everything. And so he sells everything. His five paintings at 100k. And he makes a nice profit on that. Now, Justin Bober during this transaction was super happy. His dealers sold as much as they could because those dealers made a very bad decision. As in, they just went for the short-term economics, the short-term gains, and they wanted to take commissions, commissions, commissions on Justin Bober, not really caring about his uh, his his art career. And they they just went for the short-term economics, the commissions. And they knew that it was hyperinflation. They knew that Justin Bober would would soon drop to zero. That Justin Bober was nothing. And so. So what happens is that James sells these paintings, other collectors start selling off up until the point that there are no buyers anymore, prices drop dramatically, um, and some collectors who bought pieces at 10, 20, 30, 40, 50k cannot sell it even any, they cannot sell it anymore at 5k. And so they feel screwed. And now the track record of Justin Bober is completely screwed up. And he has to basically choose a new career or die for the next 10 years and then um, then do something something slowly crawling back up you know and so this is what we call hyperinflation it's hyped what's happening is that uh, the graph that you're seeing that goes up and up and up and up and the prices that go up it's much like a cryptocurrency or something you know? like some of these cryptocurrencies went up in no time even though they didn't even have a company yet <laughs> they didn't even have the technology yet. like that's that's hyped it's hyper inflation and so um so what happens in, in in those those scenarios is that the price is not in line with the value and so when you're a collector, when you're an artist and your prices go up, you have to think about that. Is the price here in line with the value of this work? Can you justify the growing price other than with your own ego? If the answer is no, then you shouldn't raise prices because in almost all scenarios, um, and there are many of those scenarios. Yearly, there are many of those scenarios that I just explained here. Um, in almost all of those scenarios, the prices drop dramatic dramatically and you screw up your um, track record. And collectors lose money. And everybody kind of basically loses. Even the, the dealers who win money in the short term, they lose because they lose their name. Artists after that will not want to work with them anymore. Or they're desperate and they're not going to do anything anyway in the, in the art world because desperate artists don't really get anywhere. And so, so this is very interesting to understand. You have to understand what influences the price. If the only thing that is influencing the price is one collector who starts buying your work, then you will have to be very careful. If you want to know what influences the price, click the card. Now, I, I made another video on that um, that goes a little bit into that and then you can understand it as well if you watch that. If you're not like that, okay. Um, and and this can also happen in very low-end markets. I know one friend. It's not really friends, more like um, acquaintances or something. Um, and he just, when, when he was graduated, he had a solo show, his first solo show. He knew a famous Belgian guy who was not really part of the art world who would come and he invited a lot of famous friends. And so they started buying paintings fairly high. I don't like, if I think like five, six K or something. So that's not, not that much. That's five, six thousand. And, and everything went really well. And then after that exhibition, he tried to sell at that price point but he couldn't he was just starting out he had no collectors yet the first collectors were at that solo show and and those people were not even collectors they were just buying because that famous guy was buying you know and so and that famous guy was also not a collector he just wanted to do that to help this artist out and so he had basically not any real collectors and 5, 6k to start is already a really high price. And so he couldn't work it around and he had to drop prices, which was perhaps not a smart idea. Anyway, he ended up being a tattoo artist, not a painter, because that's where he could make money. As a painter, he couldn't. And so this is very important to understand. Like, like you have to be very aware about these 
things that influence the price and about these patterns in the art world. If you're a collector and you see hyperinflation, don't invest. Even if everybody else is telling you like, yeah, this is the moment, blah, blah, blah. Like, don't do it. You know, don't do that. Um, so yeah, this is a short video on hyperinflation and how it influences your price and and how to be very careful about that. And um, I hope you will price your acrylic paintings or any other artwork appropriately. Ciao, ciao. Subscribe or not.